Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Brother David Poos, and I have the privilege of serving as the president of Christian Brothers High School here in Memphis. <clears throat> we gather this afternoon in this beautiful church of St. Louis to celebrate the final profession of vows of our brother, Mark Engelmeyer, as a brother of the Christian schools. It is appropriate that we gather in this particular church as it is the home parish for Christian Brothers High School. When Brother Mark was stationed at CBHS, he attended 6.15 a.m. Mass daily. As we begin everything at Christian Brothers, let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. It is my honor to welcome you to this festive and joyful celebration of religious profession. We are happy that each of you is able to be with us today as we celebrate this momentous occasion in the life of Brother Mark. We welcome his parents, Donna and Mike Enkelmeyer from Phoenix, his sister Sandra from Minneapolis, and his brother Daniel from Omaha, as well as friends from Minnesota, Texas, Franciscan University in Steubenville, and of course, Memphis. Brother Mark is especially happy and grateful that so many of his former students are able to be present today to witness him making his lifelong commitment to the Brothers of the Christian Schools. Brother Michael Fehrenbach, our provincial visitor for the Midwest District of the Christian Brothers, will receive Brother Mark's vows on behalf of Brother Armin, our Superior General in Rome. We are honored to have Brother Thomas Johnson and Brother Stephen Olert present today. Brother Thomas was Brother Mark's director of novices and Brother Stephen his subdirector. Most of Brother Mark's novitiate classmates are here as well. Brother Paul Avento, Brother Matt Kotek, whom many of you know, and Brother Dylan Perry, a CBHS grad. Brother Mark came to CBHS several years ago as a young, inexperienced teacher. He moved to Central Catholic High School in Pittsburgh last year as a dedicated, committed, creative, and compassionate teacher. Brother Mark absolutely radiates joy. He is one of the most joy-filled and joyful people I know. I do not think he has ever met a stranger. He is always most positive and upbeat. It is obvious that he has a genuine concern and love for his students. He puts a great deal of time and effort into building personal relationships with them. He knows his students well and calls each one by name, sometimes a nickname that he has given to them. Anyone who knows Brother Mark knows that he is a very prayerful and spiritual man. He is most genuine. There is nothing phony about him. What you see is what you get. He just recently completed a 30-day silent retreat in preparation for his final profession today. He shared with me how significantly that retreat impacted his life and cemented his commitment to the brothers. Brother Mark is blessed with the gift of zeal for sharing his faith. 
Students likewise regularly share their faith with him. And Brother Mark is not shy about asking his students if they have ever considered becoming a Christian brother. This is a good thing. We need more brothers today, all you young men out there. <laughs> the prophet Micah tried to convey to the Israelites a simple but powerful message. What does God ask of you? Only this, to act justly, to love tenderly, to walk humbly with your God. Thank you, Brother Mark, for living that message. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad as Brother Mark Engelmeyer makes his final profession of vows as a brother of the Christian schools. Ad multos annos, Brother Mark. As we prepare to celebrate this sacred liturgy, please stand and welcome our celebrant, Monsignor John MacArthur, AFSC, and the Reverend Mr. Stephen Najarian, who is assisting at the altar. Please join in singing our opening hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, found in your mass program.
Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Mighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him and ordered, get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate and drank, then strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb, There he came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said, go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. 
A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. A voice said to him, Elijah, why are you here? He replied, I have been most zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. But the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. The Lord said to him, Go, take the road back to the desert near Damascus. The word of the Lord.
the second reading is appropriately from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than one ought to think, but to think soberly, each according to the measure of faith that God has apportioned. For as in one body we have many parts, and all the parts do not have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually parts of one another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us exercise them in prophecy, in proportion to the faith, in ministry, in ministering. If one is a teacher, in teaching. If one exhorts, in exhortation. If one contributes, in generosity. If one is over others with diligence. If one does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be sincere. Hate what is evil. Hold on to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Anticipate each other in showing honor. Do not grow slack in zeal. Be fervent in, in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Endure in affliction. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the holy ones. Exercise hospitality. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The mother of Jesus and his brothers arrived at the house. Standing outside, they sent word to him and called him. A crowd seated around him told him, 
Your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. But he said to them in reply, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those seated in the circle, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. He who is to make perpetual profession of vows, please come forward with your sponsor, Brother Mark Engelmeyer. Present. Brother Mark, what do you ask of God and his holy church? I ask for perseverance in God's service within the Institute of the Brothers of the Christian Schools all the days of my life. Thanks be to God. It is in the company of Jesus that you work for the glory of God. These words of St. John Baptist de La Salle, taken from his meditations on the feast of St. Andrew. Let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God. Reverend fathers, brother visitor, brothers of the Christian schools, friends and guests, dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. The year was 1714. John Baptist de La Salle was now 63 years old and physically exhausted, worn out both psychologically and spiritually. And in the words of St. Paul, he had been poured out as a libation for the sake of his brothers, his students, and for the church. He had suffered from chronic illness, the disappointment of many setbacks and failures, the opposition of many of his fellow clergy at the time, multiple lawsuits brought by the teaching class of the day who were threatened by his offer of free education of the poor and by the abandonment of a number of his confreres who found his way of life too difficult. Within two years, he would be bedridden for almost 10 months. And at the age of 68, in 1719, he died, upon which many acclaimed, the saint is dead. At his death, the Institute was on sure footing with an approved way of life, leadership in place, and communities of brothers in schools throughout France. His story began on April 30th, 1651, as John was born into a devout Catholic, fairly well-to-do family in the famous cathedral city of Reims in the Champagne region of Northern France. At the time, the country was recovering from religious wars. He would be one of 11 children, four of whom died in infancy, and was raised with a deep love for the faith by devoted parents and grandparents who taught him his prayers and read to him the lives of the saints. Two of his brothers would become priests, and a sister entered the convent where she died at the age of 25. 
From an early age, John was destined to become a priest. By age 11, he received the tonsure and was made a canon of the cathedral at age 16. But by the time he was 21, both his parents had died and he had to interrupt his seminary studies to care for his brothers and sisters as the new head of the family. He was finally ordained a priest at the age of 27 and with the gift of his keen intellect obtained his doctorate in theology. And then his life changed even more radically. Through the influence of friends, he became interested in the education of youth whose lives were pretty much left to the streets if they were poor. He would later go on to say that had he known where all this would lead, he would have never begun. One biographer would say that John incarnated himself with the poor of this world and would later tell his brothers to see Jesus under the poor rags of the children they taught. Within a few years, he began to invite teachers to live with him in a common manner of life and dedicate themselves to the education of the poor, while at the same time also accepting the children of the wealthy in his schools, knowing that by training them in the ways of the gospel, they would in turn respond virtuously to those in need. He gave away most of his inheritance, gave up his position as a canon of the cathedral and the salary that went with it and he and his brothers were now totally dependent on the providence of God. He would go on to inaugurate a revolution in the method of teaching, from the previous model of private tutorials to one of classroom instruction in their native language, and further develop a system for the training of teachers. He would later say that his greatest contribution to education was recruiting quality teachers and giving them a sense of pride in their work with a deep religious motivation, a sense that they were people called to destiny by God to do a great work for God and for humanity, that they were ambassadors of God and that the children they taught were their riches. The legacy of John Baptist de La Salle is vast. His educational accomplishments, his collected writings filling more than 40 volumes, his extraordinary letters to his confreres and others numbering well more than 10,000. But even more important is his spiritual legacy. He considered that among his most important compositions was his Meditations for the Time of Retreat, which reveals the spiritual underpinnings of his life. And from this, a number of things are clear. That the foundation of his life was his living personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The dedication of his life and his institute was to the Most Holy Trinity. His purpose in teaching was to draw students into a life of living the gospel as disciples of Jesus, and so attain the glory of heaven, and to see himself and his brothers as instruments in the hands of God. As if speaking in St. John's own words, one biographer would say, that's why I insisted that the spirit of faith be the fundamental spirit of the brother. The brother is a vine attached to Christ. The brother is God's co-worker and ambassador and a guardian angel to his students. That's why I insisted on zeal as the other principal spirit of the brother, for zeal is nothing more or less than faith spilling over in love, God's love, a deep and mighty overflowing of graciousness and faithful love upon the world. And it is this legacy of faith and zeal and love for God and others in community 
that has borne the fruit of an institute producing 14 canonized saints, 150 beatified, and 12 more now in various stages in the process of being declared saints. And that leads us to today, to this rite of perpetual profession of vows, to the Church of St. Louis in the Diocese of Memphis, indeed a long way from northern France. On this August day, some 340 years after the founding of this Institute of the Brothers of the Christian Schools. But this day is in continuity with that marvelous saintly work of De La Salle, even if these times are so different, even if the day-to-day -day life of the brother is different from the Benedictine and Jesuit ideals of his day upon which De La Salle patterned his rule. For in a long line of brothers, Brother Mark is before us today as a witness to the primacy of the gospel, a witness to the necessity of dedicating one's life to the glory of God, a witness to the workings of grace won for us by the Savior, a witness to total dedication to the person of Jesus Christ and the body of Christ that is his church a witness to the cross of Jesus as the sign of perfect love and mercy, a witness to docility to the action of the Holy Spirit, a witness to living in expectation of union with the Holy Trinity, a witness to living in love for God and others. And in a world where there is so much despair, so great a denial of God, such lack of graciousness and civility, so much violence and divisiveness, and such degradation of the human person, this is a witness that is sorely needed. Brother Mark grew up in an ordinary Catholic family in Northeast Minneapolis. He was nurtured in the faith both at home and in his parish of St. Charles Borromeo where he was exposed to the beauty and richness of the Catholic tradition, a parish that has produced 16 vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life in the last 10 years. He was an altar server and an Eagle Scout in the local scout troop. He first met the Christian brothers at De La Salle High School, my own alma mater of all too many years earlier and then came to know Jesus in a very personal way in college at Franciscan University. But in the midst of an ordinary life, God has been working in extraordinary ways in Brother Mark's life. The work God began in his baptism so many years ago has become increasingly fruitful through his life of devotion and steadfast prayer his love for the word of God and meditation on the sacred scriptures, his sensitivity of spirit to the presence and action of God, his compassion for others, his extraordinary zeal and energy in teaching, his courageous sharing of the gospel in charity, his faithful love for the church and all her teachings, his daily zeal for the Holy Mass, and his hunger for Christ truly present in the Eucharist, his filial love for the mother of God and devotion to the rosary, his diligence in praying the liturgy of the hours as prescribed by the rule of the Institute, his kindness and generosity towards others, and now his willingness to give his life sacrificially for the sake of the kingdom until death as expressed through the perpetual profession of vows. The five vows he will soon profess for life, poverty, chastity, obedience, stability in the institute, and the life of association for the service of the poor through education 
can be summarized not just as the perfection of his baptismal consecration, but an expression of the perfection of love itself. I don't mean love in any kind of sentimental or affective way, but in its true meaning as the sacrificial gift of self. On this day, Brother Mark freely chooses to love God above all others, affirming that God through grace is the center of his life, to love others as himself, to give of himself completely to advance the kingdom of our Savior, to dedicate himself and his teaching apostolate in the company of Jesus to the glory of God to impart to his students what he himself has experienced of God in prayer and to seek union with the Most Holy Trinity as the ultimate goal of his life and ministry. My dearest friends, may each of us who witness these vows today be inspired to live more faithfully our own dedication to God according to our state in life to love our Savior Jesus Christ with ever greater devotion and affection, and to follow the Lord ever more closely until we at last meet him face to face. We pray especially for you, Brother Mark, that you persevere faithfully to the end of your days in the vows you make, marked with the sign of faith, signum fidei, with great zeal and in communion with your brothers. You will then be escorted by the Blessed Virgin Mary to the throne of her son, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and will behold the sweet face of Jesus, who will give you the look of love and tender mercy and grant you your heart's desire in his glorious kingdom. And next to him will be the saintly founder of this institute who will welcome you as his son and brother and acknowledge you lovingly as one who has faithfully continued his legacy. Amen. Amen. Praise be Jesus Christ. St. John Baptist de La Salle, live Jesus in our hearts. Brother Mark, in baptism, you have been consecrated to God's service. Are you now resolved to unite yourself more closely to God by the bond of perpetual profession as a brother of the Christian schools? I am. Are you resolved with the help of God to undertake the life of association for the service of the poor through education, chastity, obedience, poverty, and stability in the Institute, and to persevere in them forever. Are you resolved to strive steadfastly in the love of God and of your neighbor by living the gospel with all your heart and keeping the rule of the brothers of the Christian schools? Are you resolved with the help of the Holy Spirit to spend your whole life in the generous service of God's people? I am. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment before the day of Christ Jesus.
is Neil.
Let us rise. Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, prostrate with the most profound respect before your infinite and adorable majesty, I consecrate myself entirely to you to procure your glory as far as I shall be able and as you will require of me. For this purpose, I, Brother Mark Engelmeyer, promise and vow to unite myself and to remain in society with the brothers of the Christian schools who are associated to conduct together and by association schools for the service of the poor, to go wherever I may be sent, and to do whatever I shall be assigned, either by the body of the society or by its superiors. Wherefore, I promise and vow association for the service of the poor through education, stability in the institute, obedience, chastity, and poverty in accordance with the bull of approbation and the rule of the institute. I promise to keep these vows faithfully all my life. In testimony thereof, I have signed, done at St. Louis Church in the Diocese of Memphis on August 13th in the year of our Lord, 2023.
Ece quam bonum et quam iucundum, abitare fratres in unum, sicut erat unguentem in capite, quo descendet in barbam barbam haron. Te quam bonum et quam iucundum, habitare fratres in unum, quo descendit in oram vestimenti eius, sicut ros erman qui descendit in montem sihon. Ece quam bonum et quam iucundum, habitare fratres in unum. Quonia milic mandavit Dominus benedit Sihonem, et vita musque in seculum. Ece quam bonum e quam iucundum, habitare fratres in unum. Gloria patri et filio et spiritui sancto. Ece quam bonum et quam iucundum, habitare fratres in unum. Sicut erat in principio et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Ece quam bonum e quam iucundum, habitare fratres in You may be seated.
with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
You may be seated for a few moments. Even provincials have to be obedient. <laughs> you know, what we have joined with Mark in today, this is an experience, uh, but it's not a one-off thing. The vows don't make Mark. The vows are attitudes, dispositions, a way of living God's love. Mark has been doing this for years now. And today, he was able to make public his commitment to the people of God, to you, to me, the brothers, and the church. We all have to find our vocation in life. It comes through those things that attract us, the experiences we have, the people we meet, the relationships that give us life. It didn't start today. It started first in Mark's family. So Sandra and Daniel helped teach him what it means to be part of a community. And I want to draw special attention to Mark's mother, Donna, and to his father, Michael. And I'd ask you to come stand by me for a minute. This is great. They're surprised. <laughs> Your love gave birth to Mark. And you taught him through your vocation what fidelity is. And so we are incredibly grateful for the way you have nurtured him, given him life, and then have given him to us. You have given him to the church. Mark, with the rest of us, is about the salvation of the young. He learned that from you. And so as kind of a remembrance of today, I wanted to give you this box. I know I bumped it. <laughs> but it, 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 it's just a, a token of our deep gratitude and appreciation for what you have contributed to Mark's life and to us. And so thank you so very much, and may God bless you. I didn't finish my obedience. <laughs> We're asking that the brothers stay for a photo op and that Mark's students, who are here, also stay. Uh, we'll take a picture of the students first and then the brothers, but everybody is invited to go to the Clunan Center for a, a reception following this liturgy. So thank you. Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, the inspire of every good resolve, foster your purposes and strengthen your hearts that what you have promised you may keep with persevering faith. Amen. May he grant you to hasten in the joy of Christ along the narrow way you've chosen rejoicing to bear the burden of your brothers and sisters. Amen. May the charity of God make you a family brought together in the Lord's name to show forth the image of the love of Christ. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you, remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel. 
Ephanus 